Hello, this is a video about uh, making a bowl from two pounds of clay. In other videos, there's going to be a demonstration about centering and troubleshooting, that sort of thing. But here we're starting from something that's already more or less centered, and uh, we're going to move on from there. So we're going to make a general bowl shape, uh, and the, the, the basics of this is going to be uh, dropping a hole and then thinning the walls in different kind of ways and uh, maybe adding a little bit of a finished shape to it. So let's go to it. Uh, the wheels you're likely to be using can go uh, pretty fast and I don't think that we need any of this speed as we're trying to make a thing. So what I want you to do is pull back on a medium fast speed until we're about here. It becomes a subtlety later whether you change the speed from here as the pot goes more and more, but uh, you'll see how I do it and that's probably going to suit you just fine. So there's a lot of slip on the clay here already to keep it uh, slippery, but anytime you need water, you can dip your hands in water and uh, keep them wet. So since this is already centered, what we're going to do is we're going to think about the hole. Now, this first part here is very curved and I think it's useful that it be curved while you're still doing the coning up and coning down. But sometimes this curve is inconvenient when you're trying to drop a hole. So once you're starting to drop a hole, here are some tips. Uh, uh, some, you'll see some people flatten out the clay with their hand like this and make a slight dent here. And this is going to capture a little bit of slip and maybe a little bit of water. Now depending on how your hands are built and how much clay you have, you're going to use one of two ways to drop the hole first. Here's how I do it. Brace your arms against your body like this so that you're stable and let your hands relax around the spinning clay. Let your thumb ends find where the center would be and you're just going to start to push in the clay here very lightly. You're going to push for a little bit and then it's going to start to seem dry there and you can either move water from another surface in there and make it slippery or you can get some water and drop it into there now that it will stay. So depending on how long your thumbs are, you might be able to do the whole drop all the way down with just your thumbs. But I think that usually you're going to have to go to something else bigger. So the first part is to begin to make this hole where your hands are stable and your wrists are stable and you drop in like this it's going to be convenient if this hole is a little bit angled. Now one of the accidents that happen in the beginning is that you're so well thinking about how deeply your thumb ends go that you don't notice that your wrists stay low and flatten this out by accident. So as the thumb ends get deeper you want to raise your wrists a little bit so that you don't accidentally flatten this out too too much. Now this depth uh, is going to be about the thickness of your finger, uh, the thickness of your finger like so, from the bottom of the clay so that you have enough bottom to work with. And um, you can check it with a needle tool if you want. Uh, there's a technique for that which I'll show you in another, in another video. So this hole is not quite there and I'm going to continue making the hole with my hand held like this and the other hand mirroring it like this so that you have again all the strength of both of your hands in a stable sort of funnel shaped hole and this is a good depth we're going to continue on from here here's where you have to start making decisions about what to do next based on the form that you want and since we want to make a bowl the inside form here is going to start to look like a bowl now here's a tip that goes beyond any of your specific techniques. The advice I give my students is this. If you're aiming for a particular kind of bowl, the metaphor I want you to think about is if you were throwing uh, a frisbee in high wind to a friend. If you throw the frisbee directly at the friend, the wind will move it out. In the same way, if you aim at a bowl shape, the wheel will spin it out wider. And so the tip that goes beyond any particular technique here is that as you're trying to aim for a shape that you want, you make the shape taller than you want it to be at the end, and you make it more straight-sided than 
you want your final curved shape to be. And this is going to uh, neutralize a lot of the unexpected help that the spinning wheel is going to give you. And we'll see what that looks like as we get there. So the first thing we want to do in making this actual bowl is to pull this, this width here out a little bit into a curve. And one of the more stable ways to do this is to hook your fingers over in here and pull gradually towards you. This donut becomes your whole piece. And what we're doing is we're moving the donut wider out. This is not a height move yet. Let's try it. We're going to take our fingerprints here and they're touching right here. And this pull is going to be very gradually towards you. And maybe up a little bit to where it makes a curve. And very gradually let go from wherever you are. Now I'm going to clear off water here and you'll see that sometimes the inside bottom here is, is weird. And so uh, you're going to want to make it flat in general. Uh, later there will be reasons to leave it bumpy for a design choice. But what you want to do uh, before you have any height to your walls, you're going to take your fingerprints and move them flat against the wall and compress it down. In your early pots, you might get uh, some cracks out of the kiln and your bottom shows a certain kind of crack and this helps prevent those in future pots. So this is almost as though you're ironing out the shape. This is called compressing the bottom and it helps. And if I remove the water, you can see the shape left over. We don't necessarily need it to be uh, correct up in here because this part of the wall hasn't been made yet. So once the compressing happens, you're mostly done with the bottom. Now we're going to start with the walls. Now many of your teachers are going to have you go right to using a fingerprint pinch on the way up. I want to add a step in be uh, right before then. I'm going to use my outside hand here, the very flat part of my palm, right here against the wall. And I want to show you how hard you have to push in order to get the wall to dent in from its orbit. So I'm pushing my hand here and watch this dent in. If you can see it, you see how the, the, the thing gets a little bit smaller and also the wall dents a bit. That is as much as you need now. And so with that much pressure from the outside, you're going to take your inside hand here and leave it on the inside surface. Then when you push the clay in here, it doesn't get smaller, it goes up a little bit. And that's what we'll see. So you're going to try that for about six seconds. So I'm doing it now, pushing in, four, five, six, and then let go slowly. And this is the first effort against the clay wall that should work. We're hoping to make the wall evenly thick all the way through. And let's try it again. Notice that if I push on the wall, it'll change, it'll change its shape as it spins, right? So you're going to use your big broad hand and again you're going to put your hand here and try that for another couple seconds. And then let go slowly. So the target thickness for this particular place is about the thickness of any one of your fingers. The whole wall is about that thick and then I think you can go down to the smaller grip which gives you more control and less friction uh, as you're making the piece. So uh, let's continue from there. So generally, the fingerprint pinch is in such a way that you have some kind of leverage across your two hands like this, and then you're bringing your fingerprints together like this. And then when the clay is in the middle, it changes its shape. And so when you're making a bowl, you're going to start from the bottom, and you're going to uh, exert that pinch a little bit, and then once you have that pinch going, you're going to very slowly Drag that pinch up the wall. Now there's a tip about the rim. I'm here at the rim and don't skate up off of it upward. Just let go off of it sideways. So the move there is where you're coming up from the wall like here and you get to the rim and you let go off of it sideways like that. If you continue to move, you sometimes change the rim in a way you don't like. Now at any time, on any piece of pottery, if the rim is too thin, 
or the rim is doing some kind of wobbly thing you don't like. You can take a sponge, let's try the normal shape. You can take the round kind of sponge and fold it around your thumb like that to where you get a groove, sort of like a saddle on a horse, and you're gonna coast your fingers here, inside and out, and uh, float that sponge over the rim like this, and whatever you have will become a little bit more stable. You can do this at any time. And so it looks to me as though uh, we can go a good bit farther with this bowl, and then, and then we'll be done. So again, we're gonna set up our pinch, and we're gonna go to the bottom. This might be a good time to slow the wheel down a little. And so I'm aiming for a bowl that ends up somewhere out here and has a curve like that. So this is okay that it is so narrow and it's gonna be up like here. I'm aiming for here. And so the pinch starts at the bottom. And the one tip here is that you see how my finger is cleaning off some clay here? When I begin my pinch, it starts right down here at the bottom and makes sure that this goes in a little bit. And then uh, the pinch travels upward. And so as I go upward, the clay changes shape. And again, here at the rim, I'm going to let go slowly. Now, look here. See how I'm almost finished my business and it's still dented? You want to let go really slowly so that it goes back to round. That dent is okay. Uh, the problem happens when you let go of that too quickly. And so um, when the wall gets thinner, sometimes water is a problem. So one way to put water everywhere is to take the sponge and just swab water all over the wall where you're going to touch it. And then if you keep your hands wet, like this, it'll be fine. So now we're, adding, we're getting toward the end of this piece of the raising, and then we're going to shape it and, and be done. So as long as you can take, as long as you can take a, 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 a pinch from the bottom, you can keep going. And then as we get up to the rim, we're not going to do too much. That was a big change. Now the thickness of this wall now is at least as thin as my pinky, and I think we're going to be done with the raising part, and now we can go on to the shaping. Later you'll see people do both the shaping and the thinning at the same time, and that's just fine, uh, but we're separating it out for the purposes of this video. So we're going to slow the wheel down even further. I'm going to put water on the wall with the sponge, and when you're starting to shape it, I would start a little bit with the rim. So one way to make a bowl wider is to take the rim and drag it out very gently and, and uh, let it go slowly. Now there are a lot of different bowl shapes you might want through here. And the, the most structurally stable are any of those bowls which would look as though you had hung a string by two ends. If you hold a string by two ends and you can imagine that it uh, uh, forms an arch, and then any of the bowls that occur along that curve, no matter how you stretch the string, is going to be a strong bowl while you're making the bowl. Uh, sometimes, when we're shaping the bowl from this point, we can use a sponge on the inside to make sure that there's enough water and enough slipping to keep the bowl from, from uh, tearing. And so I, I personally kind of like bowls with a big rounded inside, and so that's what I'm going to do. And so you notice that these touches are much more gentle, and the wheel is moving pretty slow. And there's a few extra tips that I'll give you to finish this out. So as you may have known, uh, the bottom is going to need to be trimmed. And so I'm not finished shaping the bowl yet, but I am going to take this corner tool and scrape off a little bit of the clay down here and clean off the wheel head. This means that for me, uh, when the piece is done, I can trim off a little bit of that bottom much more easily because now the surface is a little bit uh, different. And the last thing I'll show you is a way to do the shaping uh, with a rib on the inside. A rib is any rigid object, usually wood or metal or plastic, that's going to extend how you use your fingers and this is, the most la this is the last, most gentle touch you might give to the piece 
in order to borrow some of the curves of that tool. And you can see that it's wobbling pretty dramatically and I can deal with that. And so this is a way to further change the shape. You see how it changes on the inside like that. We don't need any of this slip here. And you can also use tools like these to, um, to shape the outside. So uh, we're going to use a sponge on the inside for a light touch. And the rib on the outside for this. And I think we've got a, a perfectly nice generic little ball. Um, the inside here, there's a shelf here which I'm going to fix. And then we can be done. And so we stepped through the, the raising of the wall and we looked at different ways of uh, using friction on the wall by either a whole hand or by uh, using your fingerprints. And so you should try those things. And um, thanks for watching. We'll make another bowl soon. Bye-bye.